Hi, how are you? I just back from the office meeting this week and I find out news recession is coming. Recession is coming. Spring 2020. It was like, oh my gosh, it's unbelievable. We get so many great years and now is recession coming. So, let me highlight a couple of things for you guys in this video and I hope you stay till the end because there will be a lot of interesting information here. Hi guys, I'm so excited uh, to bring Jim Murphy today to this interview and we have a huge topic uh, last week in the office meeting so it was talking about recession so it's coming recession next year and uh, Jim brought this topic and I invite him to highlight a couple of things what's gonna happen in spring of 2000 uh, 20 or maybe summer 2020 so maybe slightly delayed too yeah and, uh, Jim why do you think this recession is common? Yeah, it's a you know it's a, it's a topic that obviously no one really wants to talk about, but it's something that we need to be on the the, the edge and on the head of, of of our market. I mean, we're in the financial and real estate side, so what we've seen right now is, is historically we've seen a few different markers that have always predicted recession on a 100% basis. Um, those are the inversion of the 10-year versus two-year Treasury yields. That's the unemployment rate, and then it's also about where the 10-year Treasury is on its own. So what we've seen right now is an inversion of the 10-year versus the two-year treasury note. What that means is the price of money for a short-term loan and a long-term loan have switched. For those of you who have purchased a home, that's like a, a five-year arm versus a 30-year mortgage. If they're the same rate, you know, which one are you going to take? 30 years mortgage, of course. 30 year mortgage. Yeah. You're going to take the 30 year mortgage because you have a longer term that you know that that term is locked in. Five year arms adjustable. That's the same thing as the two year treasury. The two year treasury basically follows what the Fed does. So the Fed has been increasing interest rates over the last couple of years, two, three years since the economy has done really well since about 2010, 2011. Now, on the flip side, we've actually seen some low inflation in the last four or five years. The US dollar is not as strong as it was three or four years ago. I think we can all agree. On that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So basically, what has happened is the 10 year Treasury note has inverted with the, the two. That means that 10 year is cheaper than the two. What does that mean directly? It means something's off. You know, it might mean that the Fed didn't lower their rates quick enough, and that's kind of what, you know, regardless of religious affili or political affiliation, uh, President Trump is talking about. I have a question about yeah. it. So, because like we had few recessions before, do we have same situation with the Treasury note in previous recession or recessions in the 2000s? Uh, so, like, this is, is this is similar, similar yeah, this is more like the 2000 or early 90s, or this is more like a cyclical recession. We actually have a cyclical recession every seven to 10 years. And the recession is simply defined as two quarters of negative GDP. So, if you have two negative quarters of GDP, Ironically, you don't really know you're in a recession until you're actually in one. So what we're looking at right now is indicators about getting into that recession. It's not going to be something that you feel overnight. It's not going to be like a housing crisis in 2007 and 8, which I think a lot of people are feel fearful of because that was our last recession. The difference is that recession was caused by the housing market, the housing crisis, the financial crisis caused a recession. Previous recessions were caused simply by the markers that we're talking about and just a little bit of a market correction because you can't be in a bull market forever. We've been there for about nine years. If you're in a market like that for that long, something's got to change. Yeah, I have questions about unemployment because sure. like unemployment is a big player in recession. So usually mm -hmm. when unemployment is really high, uh, people losing job, losing housing, yeah. they cannot you know afford much. That's right. But like uh, right now, the unemployment is great. So we have like yeah. great unemployment. All those tech company moving to Bellevue, Seattle. We heard about Apple moving two thousand employees from yeah. California to Seattle, and uh, Amazon moving people to Bellevue buildings too. And in the Sprint District, Facebook building two towers right now too. So it's a lot of people. Uh, coming to our area to work and we have the lowest unemployment rate in the yeah. country so yeah uh, my understanding like when we have lowest unemployment rate so economy doing great you know no signs for recession so why do you think like lower um, un lower unemployment rate it's a, like open door before recession and the reason for that well the reason for um, uh, an unemployment rate to go low and then have a recession is everything starts to get more expensive for the employers too now I think and you can have the conversation 
conversation locally versus nationally. Locally, I think we're doing fantastic, right? You've got Facebook, Google, all the major tech companies in the Seattle area. Obviously, Amazon's a huge player, and they're now moving Seattle to Bellevue, so that's a huge uh, pro for us as a local economy. But nationally, when you start to get unemployment rates down to 3.6, 3.7, kind of where we're lying right now, it becomes very expensive for employers. And when things become very expensive for employers, the first thing that has to go is labor. That's the most expensive this part. Makes sense, yeah. So then if everybody's employed right now, companies have a lot of overhead. The first thing that companies are going to do to try and save money is cut some of those labor costs. So if we see unemployment rate go from 3.6 to maybe 4.4% somewhere in there, then that's a direct indicator that our unemployment rate is going to continue to go. Because so you're thinking like 4.4, it's kind of like breaking point and from that going to be jump and going to be higher unemployment rate. And of course, if people are going to lose the job and especially probably, uh, I'm assuming like service industry, what kind of industry do you think people are going to be it's more, most reflected in un unemployment? Exactly. So when you have, um, you know, so basically when you think about a job loss, right, if you lose your position, you're not going to do those extraneous things anymore. You're not going to go to the movie theater. You're not going out to dinner. You know, local small businesses will then close. And, and what you'll see is just kind of a direct reflection of that. You'll see kind of maybe people stop buying their gym memberships, for example, or they stop um, going out to expensive meals. They, they stop their second car. Like all these things that kind of bolster an economy and make, make things turn will start to slow down a little bit. And I think that's what the common misconception is, is, well, a recession hits when you're in a high unemployment place. Well, no, it, it actually starts when you're in a low unemployment place because something has to be cut. And when something is cut, then there's just a little downturn on, on everything else around it. Jim, I remember like last recession, I lived through it. I, I work with last recession yeah. and it was a nightmare for a lot of homeowners. Yeah. Is that means uh, this when this recession hits, um, people should not buy houses right now or real estate market gonna go down a lot? What's and interesting, yeah, I mean, that's a great question, Ilya, and that's a big fear for a lot of people. Well, the, the recession that we're talking about is more of a cyclical pullback. You know, you can't, you can't be going full bore like we have over the last nine, 10 years and, and keep up that consistency. You know, we've seen the inflation rates continue to dip since about 2010. Something has to change there. So what, what's gonna happen is basically a correction. It could be six to 12 months. What happened in 2007 and 2008 was a, was a direct recession due to the housing crisis. The housing crisis caused a recession. This is totally different. And in, in past recessions, you know, we see home prices actually stay pretty darn stagnant. They stay about the same through that six to 12 month marker. And on the other side, you actually get lower interest rates. If you look historically, going back to the late 80s, interest rates went down from 18% to 13%. 13% sounds extremely high, but 5% better in interest rate is incredible. You know, the same thing happened in 2008 to 2012. You know, we saw interest rates go from six to 4.875. That's a huge drop. What you get there, being a homeowner at that time, then is it's more inexpensive monthly housing payment. And if you have a more inexpensive monthly housing payment, your buying power actually goes up. So a general rule of thumb is about every 1% is about 10% in buying power. So if, if interest rates drop one full percent, that means that same buyer can buy something 10% more than they're currently pre-qualified for. So what that means for homeowners is, if you buy before the recession hits, if you buy during a recession, your home value is probably gonna maintain its value because the housing market didn't cause a great recession like it did in 2007, 2008. And if you have lower interest rates, it means people can buy more, so the value of your home on the other side of a recession should actually go up a little bit. Historically, we look at about 5% appreciation in our market. You know, we've seen that here, and gosh, in 2000, you know, 10, 11, 12 to 2018, we saw, yeah. what, you know, 15 to, 20% increase. Yeah, in some areas like yeah. Kirkland and Redmond. Yeah, so it was an interesting time. And um, uh, myself, I'm thinking like, you know, that's probably right because like, it still makes sense to buy because you have very low interest rate and who knows how long it's gonna be on the market, so. Well, and, and here's the other thing too, interest rates right now are, are darn near 4% here on, on July 12th, uh, 2019. The craziest part about this whole thing is what's happened with the US Treasury note as well. The 10 years at about 2.1% as of today. Um, the 10 year Treasury note, last time we were in recession, went down to 1.36%. So if it goes down to 1.36% in 2008, well, historically we can see the trend graphs from the peaks and the lows for the last 30 years, and we can see a trend downward. So our last downward trend was 1.36%. Right now, we're at 2.1%. If we're trending down again and we get sub 1.36%, maybe down to one or one one, somewhere in there, we can see interest rates down by 3% historic lows. So if we have a recession, 
and we can maintain employment as individuals, we're actually going to end up on a pretty darn good um, position on the other side with low interest rates and, and home prices continue to grow. And I think that's why locally we need to be really, really excited about being homeowners in the Seattle um, Puget Sound market. I mean, all of Washington has done pretty well, but if, with our strong employment locally and with interest rates possibly lowering, that could mean an actual boost in everybody's home value. So that's why this is not a doomsday talk. This is more of a, an educational talk on why these data points are happening, but why we can expect to have some positivity on the other side. Yeah, that's very, very good conversation. Like, makes total sense. And also, like, uh, I remember, like, when there was last recession in 2006, 2007, the stock market was flooded, and a lot of people who uh, have money in the stocks, they move on money somewhere else. Yeah. So like, and uh, you know, a lot of people move on money to real estate market as yeah. well to make more secure. So, and the real estate market actually was probably rebound because uh, a lot of people bought houses at the time, like entry-level houses, yeah. and um, it was rented, the rental market was strong. So uh, I think, I mean, if recession's coming right now, so if you're thinking it's coming, it's probably gonna be reflected as well. So a lot of people who keep money in the stocks, if stock market gonna change, uh, we're gonna have more money available for real estate market. Well, that's a great point too. I mean, and, and what's happening right now is a lot of people are doing very well in the stock market. You know, the housing market has not gained as much momentum this year um, versus the years past, but it has stayed relatively flat, if not a little bit better. So right now people are making a lot of money in the stock market, but if we do go into some sort of recession, that does mean businesses aren't doing as well, and that should mean that stocks aren't doing quite as well and at that time. It might be a good idea to shift money from one to the other. Now, I'm not a CPA or a financial advisor, so I can't give that kind of advice directly, but if you look at market trends, that could be something to look at. And another thing that's happening too, going back to the 10-year treasury note versus the two-year, the two-year treasury note basically follows what the Fed does. The Fed's job is to keep the, the spread between the 10-year and the two-year to make short-term money inexpensive versus long-term money. That's what the inversion we were talking about earlier it has not happened. Now, what is the Fed doing at the end of July? More than likely, they are going to lower the, the Fed rate to try and again create that spread between the 10 year and the two year what that does mean for our markets is is if money's more inexpensive that means businesses can borrow more and that generally means the stock market will continue to do well so if we see the fed lowering the cost of the fed rate over the next six seven months we should continue to see a pretty a pretty good return on the stock market like we have over the last couple of months and and that might mean you know people have more money to potentially look for investment properties and look for primary homes especially if interest rates are going to continue to stay low yeah that's a very interesting conversation let's wrap up what we're talking today so absolutely so basically what we're looking at is yes the 10-year two-year inverted what does that mean for us in the public that actually means money will be more expensive so if we are homeowners and we are looking to purchase then that actually means we should have more inexpensive interest rates over the next 18 months. That's a big time positive. If we're looking at unemployment rates going down to 3.6, we might see them go up to 6 or 7%. That's national. I don't think that's local. I don't think we'll be impacted nearly as much because of our strong employment, especially with all the big moves these major companies are doing over the next two years. I don't think they would do that if they didn't think that um, this, this area specifically could support that kind of growth. Um, the other thing that we look at is, that, again, the 10-year going lower and also looking at a five-year on average appreciation of home prices. If we look at maintaining our values over the next two years, we can actually see a spike in home values because of those lower interest rates. So being a homeowner or a potential homeowner into or through a recession, if you look at it over a three to five-year period, you're actually going to see more gains than if we just continued on a relatively um, solid appreciation plot. Yeah, I think like you guys should not scare about a common up recession no. because we have a lot of positive things in, with our economy in Washington state. And I'm glad you guys uh, stay tuned with us and watch this video to the end. And I want to say thank you for Jim and he's a great lender. I'm going to put his number on the screen. So reach out to him if you have any questions or if you need mortgage. Yeah, uh, give so me a call. I'm happy to strategize down the road too. I mean, this does not have to be a tomorrow purchase or anything like that. If you just want to talk about the market and what we think and what I think, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to have these conversations. Yeah, and thank you so much for having me, guys. I love to be your real estate results also. And you'll see my number on the screen. I hope this episode was helpful for you and resourceful. And guys, make a fantastic video. Yeah, guys, the best. Thank you so much.